Hallelujah. Thank you. Today, let's examine part four of Noah who built the ark with the subtitle, The Wicked Era. First, let us read Genesis 6 verses 2 to 3. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and it took wives for themselves, whomever they, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. This is the word of God. Amen. Let's start by taking a look at the predilluvian world in which Noah lived. First, the godly descendants and the ungodly descendants intermarried with each other. Take a look at Genesis 6 verse 2. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose. These sons of God refer to the godly descendants of Seth. And the daughters of men refer to the corrupt descendants of Cain. So it says that the descendants of Seth intermarried with the descendants of Cain. As a result of the intermarriage between the descendants of Seth and the descendants of Cain, they became men of the flesh, hedonistic people. Instead of becoming men of spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, they became fleshy-minded humans. So Genesis 6 verse 3 says this, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. This signifies that they had become worldly-minded humans focused on human desires rather than on God. When people become such fleshly-minded, human-centered individuals, it became impossible for the Spirit of God to remain with them. So in Genesis 6 verse 3, it declares, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. Secondly, the predilluvian world before the flood became a world dominated by sin. Take a look at Genesis 6 verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Chinese word is a compound of quan, meaning to penetrate, and yang, meaning surplus and to be full. Therefore, it means sin is abounded, leaving no place left uncorrupted. Sin is everywhere you go. There is no place uncorrupted. Furthermore, it means that wickedness had seeped deeply into every corner of the hearts of humans so that the wickedness sprung forth and overflowed. Because sin has entered deeply into the human heart, all intentions behind the thoughts and plans were inevitably evil. Therefore, every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It re it's referring to Genesis 6 verse 5. Here it mentions the word continually. It means that people were consistently evil. This indicates a state where human thoughts and plans begin with evil and end with evil, revealing a cycle of wickedness from start to finish. It signifies that all humans were completely rejecting God's rule, and they reached a state where they resented God's intervention. Please take a look at Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed Abominable deeds, there is no one who does good. Fourthly, the world became filled with violence and corruption. Look at Genesis 6 verse 11. 
Now, the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. Here, it also says the earth. It means that corruption was widespread across the entire earth in the sight of God. Corrupt is pegwe. In Chinese, it is a compound word of pe, meaning to break or to destroy, and kue, meaning to collapse or crumble. What happens when a house breaks and collapses? This means everything in this world has fallen into ruin. It's like saying, everything is broken. Everything is collapsed. To be broken, to be collapsed. Additionally, the Chinese word kang po for violence comprises the characters kang, meaning strong or powerful, and po, meaning violence or brutality. So it denotes being stubborn, wicked, evil, and fierce. These words are all, all evoke a dark and unpleasant feeling. Stubborn, wicked, evil, and fierce. Ultimately, being filled with corruption and violence means a world where harming and stealing prevails. Essentially, a world rampant with abuse, murder, robbery, rape, and all types of other violence. When we see this, we can understand that it resembles so much of the world we live in today. Isn't the coming of the Son of Man the same as the time of Noah? Therefore, when we see such situations, we can truly understand that the end times is now approaching before our eyes. These shocking sins cause God's fearful judgment to be inevitable. So God even lamented that he made man. Why have I made these people? The Lord was sorry, and he grieved in his heart. Take a look at Genesis 6, verse 13. Then God said, Then God said to Noah, For the earth is filled with violence because of them. What's next? The end of all flesh has come before me. The end time has arrived. So behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth, signifies the impending judgment of God. My beloved saints, when we look at the time of Noah, we cannot help but feel that even today, our era is approaching its end and the judgment of God is near. I pray that may this blessing be upon you in the name of the Lord, so that you may not be tainted by the world, but build the ark of salvation with faith like Noah, Entering into the eternal rest, the true rest of God, the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. When we look at this world, it has become a world filled with wickedness and full of violence. Lord, you regretted having made mankind, causing great grief to your heart. And you declared that when the end time came, you would surely destroy this earth. Father God, we are afraid that this earth will face your judgment. Like Noah, may we believe in your word, receive grace, and build a spiritual ark. And although the world is immer immersed in sin, there seems to be no place untouched by it. May we be immersed in your word, holding as our center, keeping and guarding your word, until the end. I believe that today, under your grace, it will be a day of victory, raising the flag of triumph in faith, the flag of Jehovah Nishi, and we earnestly pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.